good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have another fantasy booking style video for you guys. You guys know that we typically like to fantasy book every single WWE pay-per-view using the action figures, and today is no different, man. Really excited for this show. First pay-per-view back with fans besides WrestleMania, of course. I don't really, you know, I guess you could count it, but this one's big, man. You know, you, tonight we're having fans back, and the Thunderdome era is officially over, so that is super exciting news. I can't wait to just hear the fans, see what they, how they react and you know everything that they give us maybe they'll make some special feel good moments because the crowds are back and things of that nature of course they're not going to give it all to us but on these videos man it's not necessarily predictions it's more of you know Vince McMahon handing me the keys and saying you get to book whatever happens you get to kind of book tonight and the next few you know weeks and months and things of that nature so that is what I'm going to be doing guys really excited to get into it with you I think the cards absolutely stacked to be honest with you we have seven matches to go through and I'm pretty hyped for it I think that this could be a really good show hopefully it'll you know live up to the expectation. Money in the Bank has a pretty good reputation, not last year, at least in my opinion, or maybe it was the year prior. I think it was the year prior when they had the damn thing on the top of the of the building. Was that last year? I don't remember. I think it was. Anyways, let's dive into this card, shall we? Again, I, what I say goes, you know, I'm going to give you guys some, some fantasy booking ideas for this show. You guys can let me know what you think down below or give me your own fantasy booking ideas, but let's go ahead and run through this card. I'm just going to start off with this match because, you know, it's probably one of the ones that I least care about, guys. I'm going with Rhea Ripley and Charlotte, and for Rhea Ripley and Charlotte, there's not a ton of depth to this, at least between these two. This is a match that I'm sick of seeing. You know, I really don't want to see this ever again. I don't know. I, I just feel like Charlotte, she's so good, but at the same time, she's kind of just forced upon us so much that it kind of just puts everyone off, I think. And I think everybody just wants Becky Lynch back. So I think this could uh, revolve around Becky Lynch, maybe have Becky Lynch come out or something. I don't see that happening, but that could make for a really cool moment. You know, Charlotte wins the title, then Becky comes out, but I'm not going to put that in my fantasy booking. I'm just going to say Rhea Ripley will retain over Charlotte. And let's move on to something else until Becky does return. Next up, guys, we have the Viking Raiders, which is very cool to see them wrestling on pay-per-view right here. I feel like it's been a hot minute, and you guys know with the ninjas and the Street Profits garbage that we had to deal with. They're going to be taking on AJ Styles and Omos for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Now, I think that we're kind of on, like, this inevitable road where the RKO Bros or the RK Bros are going to be taking on AJ Styles and Omos. So I think this is just kind of a stepping stone towards that. I think I'm going to go with AJ Styles and Omos to retain. I really want to see AJ Styles get on his own here, but I don't think that would happen here unless they do something crazy where, you know, the Viking Raiders win. I always thought that, you know, the there would be a breakup between Omos and AJ, and AJ would put Omos over at SummerSlam or something, leading to his inevitable rise like Braun Strowman or something, which is what I kind of saw coming, but I'm not going to go with that right here. I'm going to go AJ and Omos winning here, and maybe their fall apart can come against RK Bros later on or at SummerSlam or something like that, but I don't know. I, yeah, I'm going to go AJ Styles winning here, keep that momentum rolling, and the Viking Viking Raiders will take the L. Next up, guys, we have the flip side. We have the SmackDown Championships or the SmackDown Tag Championships side of things right here. You have Ray and Dom Mysterio taking on the Usos, defending the titles. Apparently, you know, the DUI thing with Jimmy Uso didn't really affect him, right? I, I don't think that it's going to really have an effect on him here. And I feel like Ray and Dom, as cool as they are and everything like that, I just feel like the tag titles would hold more importance if the Usos and the Bloodline and Roman Reigns and all of them held championships. I feel like it would bring more gravity gravity towards them. As dominant as Roman is, how much more dominant and great would it be to see him and his full squad with tag titles? So I'm going to go with the Usos winning the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. That's how I book it. It's kind of like that on MDT Live, right? So might as well bring that into fruition here. The Usos will capture the SmackDown Tag Titles for the umpteenth time, joining together with Roman there and, you know, having everyone carry gold. I think that would look really sweet on TV, carry on that dominance and everything. So I'm going to go Rey Mysterio and Dom losing their tag titles to the Usos. That just makes the most sense. You know, the whole bloodline holding that gold, man, that is what would look nice to me. Next up, guys, we do have the women's money in the bank match. Now, there was some speculation about this, which I'll get into. Let me go ahead and set all these ladies up real quick. Now, I feel like coming into this match, a lot of these ladies actually have a case to capture the briefcase. Like, it could legit be any of them. The only ones that I'd probably be upset with would be Nikki Cross, Natalia, Tamina, or Zelina. But I feel like uh, that'd be half the field, right? So I guess we have like a 50% shot. I, I, I definitely wouldn't like if those four ladies won. So any other ones I'd be okay with, but in this matchup, guys, we have Asuka, Naomi, Alexa Bliss, Nikki, Liv Morgan, Zelina Vega, Natalia, and Tamina. Now, a lot of people thought that, oh my god, there's one spot left. I don't know what could happen on tonight's SmackDown, which actually is going to take me into my fantasy booking here. It's the first night back with crowds tonight, right? So, this is how we're going to go. So, you guys know that Tamina was announced as the last entrant for the Money in the Bank. A lot of speculation was like, oh, it's going to be Sonya Deville, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. Well, for my fantasy booking scenario, tonight on SmackDown, so the SmackDown before, if you see 
in this on Saturday or Sunday. I do apologize, but this is going to be tonight's action on SmackDown. First live show, you know, out of the Thunderdome. Going to be really ridiculous atmosphere, hopefully. I think out of all the talent in this matchup, I think Tamina would be the one I would have this happen to. But you could also have it happen to Asuka given prior events. But in some case or another, the man Becky Lynch will return on SmackDown and she'll either beat the hell out of Asuka, beat the hell out of Tamina, bring back the man Becky Lynch. She'll take out somebody out of this field, replace them in the Money in the Bank matchup, and win the Money in the Bank match. And it all comes full circle, Brad, because you want to know why Becky Lynch had to surrender her championship to Asuka, who won the Money in the Bank, I think it was legit like a year ago, right? Something like that. Like almost a year ago to the day. And now she returns, wins the Money in the Bank, and will go on to capture the Raw Women's Championship. Maybe even on the same night. Who knows? That could happen too. She could cash in on Charlotte. She could cash in on Rhea. That'd be a really nice story as well. Probably should have booked it that way. But Becky Lynch returns on SmackDown, taking out one of the members, or on the night of, I just think it'd be really cool to see her return on SmackDown with that first show back, but she could do it on the night of, take out the participant, win the money in the bank, cash in later, or just hold on to the case, but Becky Lynch would be would be the call. So that's how I'd book the women's, and if Becky Lynch isn't returning at all, I'd have Liv Morgan win the money in the bank. Reasons being, I think she's improved a lot, and I don't know, I feel like it would lift up her character a bunch. Naomi would be a cool choice as well. Again, I'd be fine with the other four ladies, just not the other four we mentioned. So yeah, the, the man returns. Next up, guys, we have our WWE Championship match. We have Bobby Lashley taking on Kofi Kingston. Now, a lot of people feel like Kofi Mania is going to be making a return or something like that. And I don't know, Brad. I don't see that happening whatsoever. I think they're going to keep the championship on Bobby Lashley. I do think this moment is going to be sweet and, like, the match will be really good and everything, but Bobby Lashley is going to retain the championship. I know a lot of people are fantasy booking Big E to win and Kofi to win, and then you have, like, your New Day deal right there, which could call for that, but I feel like that would be a lot better written out long term, you know, have Xavier Woods involved. I don't know, there's a lot of depth to it. I know Xavier will be at ringside and stuff, and it'd be, I guess it would call for a really cool moment if Big E were to ca win the money in the bank and then cash in, and then Xavier's sitting there like, no, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And then he crushes Xavier over the skull with the money in the bank. He crushes Kofi over the head with the money in the bank, cashes in and wins the championship, turning his back on Kofi and Xavier. Would be really cool. However, in my scenario, man, I'm gonna go Bobby Lashley defeating Kofi Kingston because I think the Money in the Bank is going to go a different direction. We'll get into that. I feel like a, a New Day triple threat at Mania could be a fantasy booking video in itself, and maybe we could do that one day or like little ideas like that. But let's dive into our last two matchups right here because they kind of tie in together. So remove Edge and remove Roman because we're going to talk about that later. So on to our men's Money in the Bank matchup, man. Probably the most loaded or most athletic, explosive lineup that we've ever had for a men's Money in the Bank match. Like, he could go down as one of the greatest ever. I hope it delivers. I'm really excited for it. Hopefully that will be the case here. So in this matchup, guys, we have Ricochet, John Morrison, Riddle, Drew McIntyre, Big E, Kevin Owens, King Nakamura, and Seth Rollins. Again, loaded matchups, loaded up stuff, man. I'm super excited for this. I like, I literally, I think I'd be excited for anybody who, who wins it. There's not a soul in this match that I'd be like, eh, maybe besides Drew McIntyre, just because he's been at the top for a minute now, I want to see something fresh and new and exciting. So let's dive into it. So I think, as we all know, this matchup's going to be very creative, very, you know, you have great names in here. You have Rollins and Ricochet and like, dude, this is just, this is like pick fed style stuff, man. This just looks in, insanity on paper and hopefully they will all deliver, man. My man KO in there. Of course, if I had it my way, I'd have KO capture the money in the bank. It's just something that I've always wanted to see. I think it, it would fit his heel character a bunch and, you know, cutting smack pro, promos, KO in the bank gear. I mean, good God. But anyways, let's dive into this. So I think at the end of the matchup, inevitably, man, I think I'm going to have Seth Rollins win his second money in the bank contract here. You know, Seth Rollins has a pretty deep history with the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, different moments and different things happening. I have him winning the Money in the Bank contract, so Seth Rollins will be Mr. Money in the Bank once again, and this kind of is where we come full circle. I think everybody will have their good showings. We'll have some feuds that spark off of this. I think we could have a lot of exciting deals here. However, Seth Rollins will win the Money in the Bank. Now, we skip to our main event. So skipping to our main event, man, Universal Championship, Roman Reigns and Edge. This has a deep history. You know, all the rumors about Daniel Bryan going to AEW. I think that's probably the case here. So they're going to leave him out of this storyline, man. He's probably gone AEW bound. That's all good. I think that'll be terrific and fantastic for him. But getting into this, man, Roman Reigns and Edge, what a terrific matchup it should be. So Edge and Roman will do war. It'll be match of the night. It'll be absolutely fantastic. Again, this whole show is going to be fantastic. But this is how I would end the show. Roman Reigns and Edge have to do it. Just the, the everything about it, man, you got to put it on last. Universal Championship, Big Dog, Radar Superstar going head to head here. 
here. So they're going to do war for a little bit, man. And near the end of the matchup, the Monday Night Messiah or Seth Rollins, I really wish he would just go back to burning it down. But anyways, Seth Rollins will cash in or he'll come down to the ring. And he's going to try to cash in, but inevitably he will not cash in. Edge will end up spearing Seth Rollins, taking his eyes off of Roman Reigns. You know, he'll, he'll take out Seth Rollins, preventing him from cashing in. Roman will spear Edge. Roman will retain. So there you go. Roman retains, and now you're left with Seth Rollins and Edge. Over the next few weeks, Seth Rollins is like, you you cost me my Universal Championship. Seth Rollins made Edge look like a fool in 2014, if you guys remember after he won the Money in the Bank. If you guys remember all of that. You remember the big show in The Authority, and they forced Edge's neck down on the Money in the Bank, and he made him look like a fool, right? Well, all of that comes full circle, man, like seven years later, and Seth Rollins and Edge will be meeting at SummerSlam, and this could go on for a while. I think this could be a three-match feud, and this will be our matchup for a while and a little bit, and then eventually, I think Edge is going to convince Seth Rollins to put the money in the bank contract up, and Edge will capture the Money in the Bank contract eventually, and then he'll cash in on Roman Reigns and win eventually. Eventually. We haven't gotten there just yet, but that's what I would fantasy book right there. That would be my fantasy booking for Money in the Bank for the next few weeks, months, whatever you want to say there. That would be really fun, entertaining television, man. I want to see Seth Rollins and Edge face so daggum bad, and I think the Money in the Bank would be an interesting tie-in. Roman Reigns still stays champ for a little bit. It's all beautiful stuff, man. It's all beautiful. It'd be freaking terrific. And since your number one contenders will be off to the side, Roman Reigns can run through some other baby faces on his way. John Cena, I think, could even show up very soon. Maybe even at Money in the Bank. Maybe he shows up. Just like, and he kind of comes into all this as well because John Cena is the reason that Seth Rollins was going to uh, break Edge's neck and then he ended up saving him. So maybe that's where John Cena comes in later on. Seth Rollins is going to break Edge's neck again and then he gets speared by John Cena and then Roman Reigns gets involved and then bam! There's your SummerSlam matchup. Seth versus is Edge, John Cena versus Roman. How beautifully booked, seven years later, all comes full circle. If they don't book it that way, total morons. But that does it for my fantasy booking video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments section below. And if you uh, aren't hyped for Money in the Bank, then... You crossed the line.